365 Nation, Eddie Osborne here with another 65 Pro Wrestling Podcast. Today's guest, none other than Joey Allen. How's it going, man? Hey, man, it's going great. It's going really good, actually. I'm just uh, relaxing and chilling, kind of bored. Don't know what to do, so it's just kind of a good good thing. Now, what are you doing with all your uh, free time now that you're <laughs> quarantined out? No? no, not much, man. Just, just sitting at home right now and just bored, actually. I hang out with my son. That's about it. You know, we play some Nintendo Switch. Got a whole bunch of video games for that. Um, so we're doing way too much screen time right now. More than he should be doing. But, <laughs> you know, it passes the time. My kid's the same, but I, I'm usually playing with him as well. So I don't care. I'm like, ah, it's all good. Yeah, no, it gets, it gets annoying sometimes. He's still small, so he likes to play a certain way, you know, and if he doesn't win, you know, all hell breaks loose, so. True. I think I'm the same way. My kid's like, come on, it's all right. I'm like, no, we got to go here. It gets hot at me, but um, growing up, were you always a pro- fan of pro wrestling? Uh, well, yeah, since I was about 10, I think, when I when I first discovered it, man, that's that's when I really got into it and i just you know fell in love ever since like everybody else started watching some i think the first thing i saw was like an episode of like worldwide or something like that nice. uh just randomly and then after that my team and i met some friends and they were all into the rock and you know raw and all that stuff so we started watching that every week they're crazy about it and then we got the uh the fir- the playstation one and the first uh the first uh, smackdown game came out and then yeah. everybody just spent a whole bunch of time just playing that constantly. Oh, um, for sure. I know my parents were like not really impressed. They, they thought it was the craziest thing and that I shouldn't be so consumed with it and all this stuff. But then eventually they just gave up and they were like, yeah, whatever. Do whatever you want. <laughs> so so when you were like, hey, I want to be a pro wrestler, what were they thinking then if they didn't even like the video games? <laughs> well, this, this was like, a, this was, so this was when I wanted, when I decided I wanted to do it, this was like six years into it. And by this time, they already kind of gave up on, you know, trying to stop me. So they were like, yeah, fine, you know, we'll just, we'll help you out. And, you know, they were supportive for sure. They funded the whole thing and all that stuff. So I was really lucky. Amazing. My my yeah. folks helped out tremendously too in that regard. Now, did you yeah. watch any local wrestling beforehand, or were you just like, I'm gonna join this thing? Uh, you seen a show with names on it, or how did it work? I did. I did. Uh, well, okay. Well, for the only thing they were not supportive of, they didn't want to drive me to the show to the training center at all. I remember, my dad drove me once, and he waited for me, and he he just never wanted to do that again. <laughs> so I had to, uh. to take the bus which was a fun experience, you know, as a part of growing up, I guess. Um, but yeah, no, I was, um, I remember like in 2004, I think when I was about two, three years into my obsession, I discovered ECW somehow. And then I wanted to see more of that. And then I saw that, you know, I went online and I saw there was like tape trading and all that stuff. And that's kind of how I discovered more like other options, like local stuff and, you know, all the indie feds that were out there and stuff like that. Um, and I remember looking up, I was like, well, maybe there's probably, there, there, sh- there should probably be some indie wrestling in Ontario too. And I looked that up and then there was a few things that popped up. Uh, I remember one of the first things that popped up was the PWA website or like the old school ACW website, I guess. Yep. Um, I don't know. I just remember, I remember seeing a picture of you and like Paul, like there was a group picture of a few people and like you and Paul for some reason. Stood up. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, I think I, I saw the uh, PWA website, like the CJB.net one. Yep. <laughs> that was, uh, that was old. yeah. I think they were, like, there was an um, October 15th show that was supposed to be in Cambridge. I remember I was supposed to go to that one, but I couldn't make it to that one. And then January 1st, 2006, the, the holiday hangover was the one that I finally went to. Was that the one with Joe? Or, no, 2007 was no, Joe. Yeah, that was the one with the thumbtack match with like, Warner. The one, yeah. I nice. think you just posted it. You just posted it on YouTube recently, so I remember kind of rewatching some of those matches too. Definitely, we've had a ton of stuff on YouTube. I'll plug it right now. All kinds yeah. of wrestling. Uh, we have shows with no people there before it was quarantined. It yeah. was terrible, and we have some really yeah. good shows as well. But it, it's uh, fun to watch and see how everyone grew up over the, all those years, and to oh, see yeah. you in the crowd for some of them. 
I think I, I yeah, there was a few of them that I yeah uh, today earlier I was just checking out the Rip Impact and Reggie Marley match. That was kind of fun to see. I remember that match. Remember the, the, this thermocle spot that I specifically remember watching like live when when it happened. So it was kind of cool too. It was kind of a way back machine. <laughs> For sure. Um, just talking about the tape trading for one second. Do you remember? Wasn't there like Jimmy Van or something like that? He did tape trading, and like, were you in with all the big guys? Because I remember I was in BC at the time, and I used to always trade out to Ontario or like the Midwest region of the states. I was in this. I was in this uh, website called CrazyMax.org. It was like a message board. And that was basically it. That's like where I went. And like, there was a whole bunch of people there just trading stuff and like selling it and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And that was, that was a lot of fun because you would just, you know, I didn't have much to trade in the, in the, in the first place. And like all the stuff that I had bought was, uh, stuff that people already had. Right. So I was more buying than trading, but then like after I developed the collection then I started trading too. Uh, For sure. I, I was the buyer as well. But I never yeah, had it was just I'm like I just need to buy some tapes. It was easier to buy the go to to, to 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 go through all the process of like you know copying a tape and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, That's um, true. it's funny how nowadays you know like everything's up. Uh, there's so many stream services and stuff like that. You wouldn't even you know think to. Uh, even though I still do, I, I still have a whole bunch of my tapes though. I, they're just sitting in bins all over my place and dvds and all that stuff and i was trying to get rid of them but it's kind of hard to there's sentimental value to it you know uh um, man I, I moved and uh i was tired i probably bought a hundred tapes and i'm like screw it and i got rid of them just and check I it, yeah. ran it every day i'm like that's, why did i do that no, that's why i was i've been trying to set up this little home gym here that i have and i'm running out of space and i have all <laughs> these like <laughs> bins of old old magazines. I, yeah, I must have like seven hundred, I think, magazines. And I would try to get rid of them. I talked to a few people about uh, taking them and stuff like that. And now, um, you know, I still haven't confirmed it with them. I'm still kind of on the, on the uh, you know, and I'm not sure if I want to get rid of them or not. But I, I do eventually. I have to. It just smells like old newspaper in my house. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, did you get? into Japanese pro wrestling through the tape trading or how that all come about? Because you love your Japanese pro wrestling. You helped turn me on to that stuff. You got figures of it. Like how that obsession come about? Yeah. It was just another, you know, like I was exploring different, different regions and different stuff. And then like, I remember seeing a few matches from Japan and I was like, Whoa, you know, at first I started watching like the American guys that go over to Japan to kind of ease into it. And then after that, I started, you know, just exploring more and more and deeper. And then I got this one really good source that was, you know, pretty decently priced and stuff like that. So you just kept sending me these and tapes constantly. It was pretty good. I didn't want, like, I mean, I have more tapes and DVDs than I could ever possibly watch. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I've always, you know, skimmed through it and, like, watched the, watched the guys that, I, you know, I know are going to be a good match or something like that. But For yeah. sure. And now we got to give you a big thank you. Uh, Aliens got your D VCR to DVD recorder right now. Yeah. He's putting out all this old content and then uploading it, sending it to me. I'm doing some graphic, quick graphic on it and putting it up. But you're a huge part of that chain. You got all those tapes from Jesse Jones when he moved. So uh, now that's why we're getting all this content out, I believe. Yeah, no, I remember picking them up from your house. Like, I think I came at like 11 at night or something like that. I was like, so excited to get my hands on it. And then I was really excited to do something with it, but <laughs> then I really didn't do much with it. But then, yeah. You made the one really... Elements DVD that was huge. It was awesome. But you sold yeah. out like immediately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We did. Awesome. It was good. I'm glad that Elian, you know, took over and he's doing such a good job with it. No, uh, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, it's definitely, it, it was a good present, you know, he's making good use out of it. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> for, sure, for sure. Now, um, was there anyone who stood out to you on the indie scene when you first started going? Or were you just like, this is kind of cool? Because you were still really young when you first started coming to wrestling, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I think I was like six. Well, no, I was 16. Uh, oh, yeah. I, the first, I remember the first show that I did see. I remember the guys that stood out was like I think it was Sean Spears for sure, and Reggie was one. Um, and I'm not. I think Team Tap Out was there too. They stood out for some reason in that show. And um, yeah, I, I remember Tommy Ryder getting killed. 
He was just uh, he just got like murdered by everyone in the rumble. <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, I remember watching like Hornet was one of my favorites, and Elgin was pretty good there too. He used to, he used to come out to a lot of shows that I went to see. Um, and Ruffy too, Ruffy was always a standout, I think. Uh, now, when you first started trading, were you like nervous as hell? Because I know I was scared, but like you seemed so shy. Like when you came and you started helping with the ring and stuff. And then, uh, and then you progressed into joining the class. How was that for you? Oh, I was, yeah, it was, it was different, man. Cause it wasn't, I don't know. It was a different crowd for me. Like, I don't know. It didn't feel like I fit in. <laughs> Why? Well, like, I mean, that's how I feel most of the time anyways. So yeah, it was kind of, it was, <laughs> it was different. It was different. You know, I was kind of shy, but like most of the guys were pretty, you know, themselves. They're pretty nice and all that stuff. Um, I don't usually react like I don't I'm not the type of person that like goes into a crowd and like fits in I just kind of like take in what's happening and then kind of like process it in my own mind I don't know <laughs> um, like I appreciate everything I appreciate people uh, around me in a different way I guess you know like I don't I still like I feel like I still don't fit in uh, anywhere really but uh, yeah no, it, was, it was it was a different position you know uh, but I did enjoy the fact that I started training, though, because it took a lot for me to even consider that because I was I was so like out of shape and I didn't really think I could do any of that stuff that the guys were doing. So it was a big step. And then, you know, I, I quickly realized that even, you know, a little bit of hard work uh, will help you, you know, tremendously in any way you, you know, you want to go. That's what I was going to work so hard. Yeah, you know, at first, and at first, I think it was great. Like, you know, I, I proved to myself that you know, working for something that you want is definitely always good. And uh, yeah, like, I, like it, it's, I don't know. Like, I did nothing. I did nothing. Just kind of sat on my ass and played and watched TV. That's about it. And then to do some physical activity was uh, almost impossible for me mentally. But then, like, when I actually went out there and did it, I realized how, you know, how long, you know, just putting a little effort will get you. Now, what was the hardest part of training to you? Other than like just trying to be part of it, <laughs> uh, cardio, man, like uh, absolutely cardio. Doing, I don't think I did much like at all. So like all all of that stuff. For some reason, I was good with squats. I remember that. Uh, <laughs> there's always something you know that you can do that you're good at. I guess no matter how out of shape you are, uh, <laughs> but just trying to keep up, trying to keep up with class. I remember like we did those. Uh, the suicide shuffles and stuff like that. And I just remember getting so frustrated. Um, but yeah, it got easier. Um, it got easier. Like it's always, it's always how much work you want to put in there, you know, and that's what you're going to get back no matter like what you do. Would uh, that be your advice to people who are thinking about training? Like just do it and work your ass off. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 Because, yeah, you can, like, you know, you can train and then you can, it's up to you to decide what you want to do and how far you want to take it. And, you know, nobody can force you. Nobody can force you to uh, take it any further or nobody, you know, can stop you unless, you know, you stop yourself. 100%. Now, you worked, uh, who was all in your class? I know Eric was in it. Um, was Addy in it for a bit? I know Lack was around. Who else was uh, in that? <laughs> yeah, I think Lack came out every now and then. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, like he was already trained. I mean, he was trained. Yeah, yes, he that. was. So he stopped in every now and then after when I was there. And I remember David Ducker being there. Uh, yep. There was Bryce. Bryce Taylor was there for a bit. Nice. Uh, of course, Eric and. Uh, was David Wood there? <laughs> David Wood was there. Yeah, he was there, nice. and I chuckled because he's one of my closest friends. Like me and him, uh, have bonded now for well over ten years now. I think we talk every day and stuff like that. So that was a good. That was a positive that came out of that too. How was he uh, looking at those old matches that just came <laughs> out? Like he's <laughs> never <laughs> seen these before. Fourteen I, years later, they come out on the internet. Like. Was he like, this is awesome? Or like, oh, no. I think I think he did a pretty good job, the match with Lack there. Yep. I think he did a great job. He looked good. He did a, he did a good job doing what he and was supposed to do. And he's brand new. He was brand new. Like, there was no... These are one of his first ever matches, right? Yeah, so yeah. No, he did really well, actually. 
He, yeah, I think so. Yeah, for sure. And in that tag match, I think he did better than I did. And he had a better look <laughs> than I did for sure. So I, I really wish that he would have uh, stayed with it. But uh, I just, it was just something that I guess he just didn't feel comfortable doing anymore. So, but yeah, there was a so few I times think- I talked to him about it and I was like, man, you shouldn't get, you know, get back in there. And he's just, he doesn't really give me a straight answer. Man. But he he actually could have done something with it. And he worked so hard. Like, he, he really worked did. really hard. And he had, he had uh, a look, man. Too. He had a really good look, I thought, too. <laughs> Just, you know, one of those things sure. when, you're, when you're into wrestling, you always look at people's looks. And I think that's <laughs> definitely something yeah. that he had. Sometimes I go, like, man, that guy looks good. My lady, like, looks at me. She's like, I, <laughs> I know. I'm yeah, like, yeah. no, just like you look good on a poster. I'm just saying, like, and she, yeah. she's always like, yeah, I know. I'm just a yeah. cover, aren't I? I'm like, ah. I, know, <laughs> I get the same. I get the same look too, because you know, like at the gym too, and like with wrestling yeah. and stuff, that you're always uh, looking at men's physiques, and you know, that's nothing wrong with that. But <laughs> hell anyway. no. Now, <laughs> so you trained, and you lost a ton of weight in like the first two years, even of just pro wrestling. Yeah, you lost, yeah, like, yeah. Four pounds. I think I can't remember now. I'm pretty sure my my highest was 275 or something like that, 272. And I remember being at 225 at one point. But I think that was over. That was over the two years. Yeah, the initial time, like when I just started training, I'm pretty sure that was like about 40 pounds. Yeah, and that was just I think twice a week to class and just you know doing just not wanting to give up really. Even though there was times where like you know (laughs) just fall to the ground and stuff like that and just keep going. I think and, that's and the scariest thing were... about. So yeah, go ahead. No, no, you keep going, keep going. Uh, just I think that's the, the scariest thing about why most people don't try is that they don't realize that you know, like no one's really gonna force you to do like five hundred squats and push-ups. You know, if you fall, you fall. It's just the uh, the fact that you know you you show that you want to try. You know, do you do your best? That's all you got to do. I think most people just get overwhelmed by being like, oh man, we got to do two hundred push-ups or two hundred squats. That's too much, so I'll quit before I even start. <laughs> you know, no one's gonna. If you can't do it, you just you know pass out. That's the worst thing that can happen. <laughs> and be For fine. sure. I used to be a little bit of a hard ass trainer. I still kind of am, but really bad back then. Okay. And I remember wanting just everyone to try. I remember like, wasn't there like a thousand sit ups, and people were like, "This is just terrible." But yeah, everyone kept was- trying. And it was just, I didn't care if anyone quit. It was just, I wanted to see how far they could push themselves. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, it was, yeah, the only time I questioned your method was the time we ran down the, the <laughs> down King Street with a uh, buddy on our backs. I think I had Ducker <laughs> hopped on my back. Oh, uh, man. King Street, and I was like, yeah, I was just not sure what was going on. But like, I understood. Went stairs, I people remember. in the back. The stairs made sense to me, but running down King Street with the guy on my back, <laughs> I remember like we fell. I think like he, cause I think I was about to give up, and he was on my back, and he's just like, "Man, keep going." And then I just fell in the middle of King Street, and I like bruises and scrapes all over my knees and elbows and stuff like that. But uh, it was fun, man. It was fun. And he was a big kid. He was big. Yeah, I always thought that he would. I think he had the best potential. Really, I did. Uh, I really wish that he continued wrestling, but uh, I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure what happened there. It's crazy how many people kind of fall by the wayside in this in this world of pro wrestling. It's hard. It's not easy. You gotta like keep working, 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 and then it doesn't pay worth shit in the beginning or even at the end unless you make it, make it. No. So like, true. you make more, but it's like you got to make your own opportunities almost. Now. Yeah. What were your first couple matches? Do you recall them? Like anything stand out about the early days of your matches? Yeah, it was great. It was just me and Lack, <laughs> and then <laughs> me and Eric and Lack. It was man. fun, man. I remember like my first match was a blast. I remember I came out with the New York Giants, like big fun for <laughs> some reason. Oh, yeah, uh, and I wore shoes, and I think I wore Paul's old tights, the man. blue ones. They got passed yep. around a little bit. Uh, they did. Came out. And I some of the people that knew me in the crowd started ch- uh, chanting DVD Trader. <laughs> that was the first <laughs> chant that I ever got. My best friend was there. He was recording it for me. So there is footage of it. Oh, but, nice. uh, it, was, it was very brief. I took a big uh, double choke slam, I think, and then uh, a big F5 for the finish. And I, yep. I'm pretty sure you can predict the, the, the results. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and then yeah. next week was me and Eric together. We had about, uh, I think we had about 30 seconds in and then Wack came out and destroyed us both. Man, those are good times for me. <laughs> Just Such watching time, guys man. grow and whatnot. I like I drive by that place so like often and I always look up and look at it and I'm like, oh man, it's good times, good time. After it's shut, uh, the school on King Street shut and uh it's because the owner didn't pay the rent. So I was renting it off this guy. I was giving money from all the trainees every month and it worked out, it was great and good things yeah, were happening. Was, and then one day man. there was like a letter on the door. It's like we couldn't get in no more. I'm like, what? <laughs> Man, I was so, like, I was disappointed, man. Because at this time, uh, no, I think I did drive. I can't remember if I did or not. I think so you were like, driving at one point. Yeah, but I just remember being so disappointed because it was just like, I remember you telling us, like, a practice, and I was like, oh, man, this sucks. Because we we're about, like, six months into training, I think, and, like, things were, like, really good, starting to be really good. I think it was May. Probably May we started training in October. So yeah. it's more than that. So it was, you know, it was really getting comfortable and stuff with that. And then, you know, and then we bounced around from a couple schools. <laughs> yeah, but, it was fun still, but like, you know, it, it wasn't the same as, you know, when you have your own. For sure. Um, yeah. But it was still fun though. I remember going to Jay's place too. It was great. Uh, it was great doing that. We had to take the ring down on Thursdays, I think, and then set it up. Uh, Monday. Monday, yeah, yeah, because and those stairs, for some reason, oh, you no, know, you just couldn't. It was there was so many stairs and there's so many angles to it too. So <laughs> you got to think about taking an 18 foot piece of wood up these stairs, probably like 15 of them at least, and then there's a little hall, and you have to turn and then lift them up the other rail and then go up another 15 set of stairs. It was yeah. crazy times, so and that's how we trained for months there in jay's place but one of the cool things about jay's place was gaza started coming out quite a bit what'd you yeah. learn from him from gaza uh, just i remember, I remember used... him yeah i remember him throwing he was just telling me about punches i remember him always being like if you you know if you throw in a weak punch don't you know just do something else do throw an elbow or do something else uh because he was really into that of course him being uh, the UFC guy and all that stuff. Um, and just trying to be more confident and stuff like that. It is always, he was like, you, you know, if you're a bigger guy, you should be bigger. So you should present yourself as a bigger guy. And then, um, yeah. And I remember working with him, you know, I got a chance to work with him like three times. I remember the one time he took like my finisher and he took a couple of other bumps that he didn't really have to, but he did. Um, yeah, he's a fun guy. I remember, now, just, I remember talking with, like, I remember so many times we were so young and we were just like sitting in a circle and like you and him or like you and, uh, Jimmy and him would talk and we just going to listen and, you know, laugh at his stories. A hundred percent. That was a lot of fun too. Uh, yeah, I, I, I probably gave up those vibes that like, I didn't want to be there as I usually do. Uh, but like I always enjoy stuff like that. I don't know. Like you know, I'm not really a type, I'm not going person, so I don't really go out that much after. And I do every now and then, and I do. I truly do enjoy. You know, I enjoy stuff like that. But uh, I don't really look like I enjoy it. If you know <laughs> what I mean. I think you called me out on it a few times. You were like, "Oh, how probably wants to go home," and I'm like, "No, man, I'm enjoying this." But yeah, I always have fun time out there every time. One of yeah. my favorite uh, times was a match we had with Louis as well. It was a three-way. Um, Gaza just found out that he could no longer wrestle due to health issues. We want to do a little fundraiser event for him. And it was uh, Louis Severo, yourself and me, in a triple threat for the Ontario title. And you won the belt. And it. I just remember looking at everyone and they were shocked at the Ontario <laughs> title. How was that for you? Oh, it was great, man. <laughs> that was that was awesome. <laughs> we had a really long day that day. I think getting the ring there, um, so it was great, man. It was it was it was it was a huge, you know. Reward. I think that was my first time winning a belt. Um, yeah, no, I couldn't believe it. It was definitely like I didn't feel like I was going to win it. Um, I didn't really expect it. So when I did, it was it was amazing, man. It was just you know, it felt like a lot of hard work and stuff like that it was kind of being, being like. It was a good day. It was a payoff. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Now, did you get to bring the bell home? Did your folks get to see it? And if 
they did see it? Did they think it was pretty cool that you wanted, or was it just they like, did. ah, cool? No, no, they did. They thought it was pretty cool, man. They thought it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think I still have pictures that I took. I took at home and stuff like that with them. And uh, I think I have a picture of like some. I think Michael Collin took a picture of me right after I wanted there. You can see the excitement on my face. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember, I remember, I remember that day, though. Do you remember that day? Do you remember how we got the rank to the building that day? No. <laughs> oh, it was. I think we had a hook. I think we had a we had a trailer. Oh, no, that the day, hook. but no latch. On. I don't think we had the latch on the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh no! So we've had some experiences with uh, getting the ring to shows at times, and this time we uh, had a truck with a regular hook. And this guy was donating his trailer to us. And we were very happy. It was very nice of him to do such a thing. Yeah. But when we get there, it was one that had just the loop on it. And you drop it yeah. on it. It's supposed to have a hitch that comes over top of it. We did yeah. not have that part. <laughs> no. That was good. So I'm like, what do we do? What do we do? And I, I probably had better options. But instead, yeah. I said, let's go. <laughs> and so we drove all the way to Hamilton, which is about an hour. We load this ring, yeah. and then, uh, or however we did it, I think we got the ring from Reggie's place. And then we had to come back, and we're coming up this hill. And all I'm thinking about is this hitch or trailer falling off the hitch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Terrible. Oh, man. It was, it was a lot of fun, man, doing that. It was always an adventure. Like, driving up to Boomers and stuff like that, you never knew what, what you know, kind of stuff you're going to do or end up doing. But, yeah, it was, it was fun, man. Um, <laughs> good times, for sure. Oh, so many, yeah, good times. Being part of the ring crew was awesome. A lot of work. Um, it's great, though. When I still come back, you come out all the time, so I love it. I get enough guys out there, so it's pretty easy whenever I get down there. Yeah, it's uh, no, but at the beginning it was it was just a lot of fun, man. Because it was like it was every week it was just, too. you just wanted to be you just wanted to be around the ring, you know. It was just so much like I don't care what we have to do if you have to like dig it up from a ditch or whatever, man. Like I'll go, I'm I'm ready to go, you know. And then yeah, <laughs> that that passion, that part of the the passion, kind of burns out, you know, as you go as you get yeah, older. That... But it's still fun, man. It's still fun to come out and help and you know do stuff like that when you can. A hundred percent. Now, what year was it when we moved to Boomers? Because that was the first year where you started becoming, you became the pure wrestling champion. You did the quest, quest for glory, I think. Yeah. Uh, was it seventh way? I think I got eliminated first. I was champ. And then it was you and Easy E. So this, like, was, this was Alpine, right? Forever. This was at Alpine, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's at Boomers. But yeah, we've got. Oh, I'm at Alpine. Yeah, yeah. Alpine was yeah 2012. I think in May. Oh, May, so 2012 in May, you've been wrestling for how long at this point? Uh, probably five years. Five years? Yeah. And, then, and then you win the big one. How was that for you? Because winning the mid-card belt was always good. It's always great to win the title. And especially your first one has got to feel amazing. Yeah. And you, I think you won some tag titles in there as well. But then oh, you yeah. became kind of the company flag bearer. You became like a gazer, a Reggie, and a Ruffy. How was that for you? I was great. I didn't see that coming either, man. Because like there was a lot of like different people coming in and new names and stuff like that coming into the company, and I was just kind of happy like doing whatever. That was usually my like you know I'll just help whatever whatever you need me to do kind of thing. And then like when you because uh, I'm not sure if I even knew until the match happened. Uh, but it, it was it was great, man. Like I didn't it was unexpected. I didn't I didn't expect that to happen at that time. Um, but yeah, it was definitely like. It was just, you know, I reached kind of like the, the. I see, like when I before I started wrestling, my only like dream was, to like, wrestle a match in front of a paid crowd, you know. So like this was going like way like beyond my expectations or like what I set out for myself. Yeah, and it was just incredible, man. It was really good. And it kind of parlayed into your feud with Easy E. So you trained with the guy. You guys worked a lot. Well, you worked several times before, and then you guys had that year-long feud. Can you kind of talk about how that all went down and, like, just how many matches you guys had? I know it sounds yeah. wrong, but I think your first match against each other when you were a champ was the best match you guys had out of all of them. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that's the one that was just on YouTube, I think. I, I think I saw it recently, too. It was, like, 20 minutes. 
or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was fun, man. Working with him is like, he's my favorite opponent, I think, to ever work with. He's just, because he's so good, man. Like, he's just so good. He's such a natural. Um, like he just comes, he knows what to do in any situation. So, like, you know, uh, it's just easy, man. It's the most comfortable that I feel in the ring is when I'm with him. Um, I, like, I don't think I've had any matches to come close to the matches that I've had with him. And working with him that whole like summer, I think we, we probably worked like four or five matches, maybe that whole year. It, was just it seemed like it was quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, and he always he was open to doing whatever. Like he he really tried hard to like give me all the tools to like try to get me over as much as possible. And he just took any move that I wanted, and he just he really you know he's always like that. I mean, just even the matches we had recently, he's uh, tried to push me to my limits and try to you know. Uh, Give me the best match that I can have. That's uh, amazing. Yeah, and then, so you, you kind of be, you kind of like, I don't know, uh, Reggie and myself still were in there quite a bit as a chance, but you kind of be, were known as that, Ruffy as well. Um, there was a couple other guys who were like predominant champs, but then it became you, Eric, and you even had the elite and whatnot. We got Josh Alexander in that situation. But you became a yeah. staple in PWA, and you never really seemed to. You never came to me like, hey, I should be doing this, or hey, I'd like to do this. You always just seemed content and just gave me your all all the time. Did you ever have like a, hey, I wish you would have done this storyline or anything like that? No, man. No, no, I don't think so. Not at all. I, I feel like I gave you my best. Oh, I tried to give you my best, like whatever, no matter what you you know, put me in. And uh, I still, I think I even do it, do it up to this day. Like I always message you and I'm like, hey, man, what do you, what do you want me to do? What do you have for me for this show? Um, yeah, man, except for those two years. There was like two years, I think, where I was just kind of like not sure what I wanted to do. And it was kind of the low points in my career. I think it was about 2015, 2006, or no, maybe 2016, 2017. I was kind of not sure what was going on. This was before I went down to Tyson's for a bit. Uh, but I, I snapped out of that. So now I feel better. And like, you know, I know that I want to stick with wrestling and do it for as long as I can possibly do it. So, um, but yeah, no, I don't think there was any, like, I, I mean, people, we always joke around like in the back and stuff like that. Oh, you know, like, I should be the champ, this and that, but like, yeah, nothing, nothing serious, right? Oh, yeah. Now, now you mentioned Tyson Dukes, and he's one of the greatest trainers going right now. Yes. How was working with him? How was uh, getting revitalized with him? Uh, it was so much fun, man, and I, I really like at this point, like I was, I, I was able to, you know, I wasn't working. A, a, that kind of shift at that time so i could actually go and train it was th it was for three months i think i went down there uh well, first it was twice a week and then the last month i went like just once a week and it was just in those in that short period of time it was fantastic and now i know like as soon as i'm able to do it again and as soon as all this stuff is over and opens up again i want to do i'm going to go down there and train again with them um as soon as you know the timing's right for sure no you mentioned uh, you were a, a fat kid when you started. Now you're in pretty amazing shape. How has the gym played a role in your life? Not, uh, not right now, man. Not right now. This quarantine <laughs> thing's got me. I haven't lifted weights in uh, about three months now, I think. Uh, wow. I just have no... Like, I, I went out and I spent all this money, actually, on, like, these dumbbells and this bench and kettlebells and stuff like that. So I'm looking at all this equipment, but it's just not the same as going to the gym, you know? I'm just not motivated at all. Uh, so it's been rough, man. It's been a huge part of my life, man. Like, um, you know, uh, just those two hours I get to go to the gym every day was everything for me, really. Like, you know, the time to myself. And uh, that's when I felt like, you know, myself 100 percent uh so it's been sure. really rough man it's been really rough man i have no i don't know what to do right now i'm just taking long walks that's about it i put my music on and uh i walk i think i went for a two-hour walk yesterday and this morning i walked for like an hour and i'm thinking i went for another walk later on tonight now what's on your playlist when you're walking man a lot of stuff like 2020 has <laughs> been really crappy but for music it's been phenomenal i think especially when it comes to rap there's so many good albums. They're like Eminem came out, Lil Wayne came out, uh, Joyner Lucas, so many good ones. Uh, Royce the Five Nine was amazing too. This year, have you heard that one yet? 
I haven't heard that one yet. You usually send me links all the time. You're alien, so it's great because I never keep up with anything. And yeah, then I'm like, oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. Oh man, so many good ones. All right, the rugged man came out too, and I was like, he's like, he's like an underground independent rapper, but he's been doing his own thing for a while now. It's been so good. Uh, but yeah, I've been kind of, I had those albums in the loop. Um, and just whatever, man. Like, I'll listen to anything. As much as I hate tumble rap and stuff like that, sometimes I put that on to get me, you know, hyped up for my walk every <laughs> now and then. You mentioned uh, you came out to Big Pun in your first ever match. What yeah. was your favorite entrance team you've ever used? Oh, uh, man. Mm. I used a lot in the beginning because I was just not, I was just like coming uh-huh. out with whatever made me feel good, uh, but then I tried to. Uh, I think probably <laughs> Drake's the motto was my favorite one to come out. Just yep, uh, that's a good one. That's good. Yeah, I like that one. Um, but then, yeah, re- I like I like this one. This this one that I have now was kind of forced up onto me by Lenny. Uh, but I do, I do enjoy it though. I like it a lot. And I feel like, you know, I feel like a wrestler should have a, an entrance that's like the same one that they use for a long period of time, just to kind of establish your character more and stuff like that. So I'm sure. sticking with this one for now, even though I want to switch it up. Like sometimes I'll, like, it's one of those things you like, sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't, but you know, it gets the job done. So we'll keep it. That's what I'm going to get to is. How do you feel about your current one? Because I know Lenny's like, got to use this one. And yeah. now you're really working with Lenny so much. You're, you're doing your own thing. And I was just wondering how you thought about it. But no, no, was, He's got some good ideas, man. He's, he's one of my favorite people. I think I've, I've, I remember like, yeah, he, he changed the whole, like, I didn't really have like a locker room friend, like when you left and then Lenny kind of came into play. And then, yeah, we, me and him have had a, I think a pretty good bond. Uh, yeah. yeah that i think uh and he started becoming your manager at that he did at one point too so it's really cool like to see oh, his personality in there with you because you're you're different personalities by far yeah you don't yeah. want any attention in the locker room he wants all of it yeah, so absolutely. like yeah he's the man like yeah <laughs> i don't want to break any kayfabe but yeah yeah i don't want to talk about shoot stuff Should work. <laughs> but uh <laughs> Uh, cause he'd be pissed. He'd be really disappointed if you listen to this and, uh, heard me break hay fame. But, uh, yeah, no, he's the man for sure. Uh, we, yeah, we like the whole, we like the same style of wrestling and like watching old school stuff and like the references that we make, I think only me and him get sometimes. And yeah, it's been a, it's been a good friendship. <laughs> now, sometimes we joke around that you're the king of the low ceiling because the Alpine <laughs> We got the wires. We got a low ceiling. There's like some beams there. It's tough, but you win yeah. a lot of matches there, and, yeah. and you also have the big matches there. You wrestle yes. guys like Homicide, Gangrel, Chris Masters, Ouch right. My Foot, uh, Hacksaw, Carlito, Tracy Smothers. I don't yeah. even know who else. Like a lot of like guys. I think Kaido. 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 Yeah. So many guys you wrestled there, and it's kind of like home base, like. How were these matches for you to work with these guys who you watched and these guys who are the future? Some of them are the future of wrestling as well. You wrestled Alexander and Easy E. Like you wrestled a lot of people in Kitchener at the yeah. Alpine Club. Like, what are some of your favorite matches, and what have you learned from some of these guys you wrestled? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think. I don't know. I think the match with Chris Masters was one of my favorite matches just because like, I don't know why, like he, he was one of those dudes. I think someone just posted on Facebook asking who's one, like one unpopular wrestler that most people aren't fans of, but you are. I said, Chris Masters, just because I don't know. I was always kind of mesmerized by his, just by the look and by the gimmick. Right. So working with him was awesome. And he was just an awesome dude. Like he was just, we, we didn't talk much. For some reason, he just trusted me to know what, what to do. He called a few things and then we went out there and we had this like 15 minute match and it's like i'm really proud of that match um i love my match with homicide that was one of my i think that's like the highlight of my career to be honest with you um well after that match though because you lost a lot of blood yeah i know i, I lost so much blood man i was panicking and like i said my cardio is not the best as is but then like with all the blood pouring uh, I think I, bu- I got busted in like the sixth minute of the match and I was still out there like past 20 minutes. So I was just dying. 
but I just remember like the 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 reaction was like amazing. That was such a, it was beautiful. And I remember like people still like talk to me about that match every now and then. Um, I remember some I talked to this older gentleman at, like at, in Brantford on the MCW show, and he was telling me that he hasn't seen a bloody match like that since like back in the day when he was watching MLG wrestling and stuff like that. So I was really it was a high compliment for me. You uh, can yeah. smell the blood in the air. Oh man! Like, <laughs> it was, never, it was I, I remember like both homicide and me. Like he threw out his uh, he threw out his uh, pants with sure. his Yeah, they were soaked in blood, and I I had to throw my uh, my singlet out too. I think I, I remember coming home showering that night, and I showered, and there was like just getting all this blood off of me was just disgusting. It was just bad. But it was fun, though. It was fun. There's some really good pictures of it, and it's out there on YouTube, too. Hell yeah. Shout out to uh, Skullmaster for always taking some great photos. Oh, photo. man. Skullmaster's the man. Yeah, man. I love it. I love all the pictures. I think that's one of the most exciting uh, things about after the show is, you know, um, checking out his pictures. And he's quick. I can go out. I can party with the boys. <laughs> and when, yeah. I get, when I get home, You're it sucks me up. I'm like, holy crap. No, he's great, man. He's a good guy. Now, how was working Tracy Smothers? Because you mentioned <laughs> how you uh, got into ECW, and he he was on TV there every week with the fully blooded Italians. Like yeah. I enjoyed having him out that weekend. It was just uh, it was somebody who we weren't regularly bring in, but I'm like, ah, let's give it a whirl. And then uh, yourself and Reggie both got to work with him. Oh, it was great, man. It was so it was fun. Like it was. Yeah, no, I remember, like, yeah, we had a seminar before that, too, right? I remember that, yep. We did a lot of, like, he showed us a lot. Of, he talked about wrestling a, an actual bear three times in his life, and he shared some really good stories there with us. Um, and then, yeah, I think we did about, I think we did, like, a 15-minute match, and there it was just, like, lessons. He was teaching me lessons as we were doing the match, uh, yeah. which is kind of interesting and stuff like that. It was fun. It was fun. I'm not sure how it came out on tape though, but uh, it was it was it was a lot of fun for me, and I I think all the fans enjoyed it too. Like a lot of people enjoyed seeing him. I uh, agree. Yeah, he was something special, something different. Oh, I'm for sure, man. Yeah, the man wrestled a bear three times. So yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Would you ever wrestle a bear? Um, uh, you know what? No, I don't think so. <laughs> the fact not, you went ah, uh, I was a like, whole. Oh. No, I'm not a big uh, yeah, I'm not a big animal toucher. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, when all this is said and done and we get back to wrestling, who do you want to wrestle the most? Or who who are some of the guys you'd like to wrestle? Oh, man. Uh, I think uh, the first the first thing I'd like to do would uh, just hit the gym and, like I said, maybe go down to Tyson's for about two, three months uh, to train and just get back into, like, cardio and, like, good in-ring shape. And then I'd like to wrestle anybody, man, really. I, I love my match with Kobe Durst. He's awesome, man. And like every time we had a match, he was just so like easy. And I'd love to have a match with him, maybe like a longer match. Uh, I'd love to wrestle Eric again, of course. Uh, Tyson Dukes. I think we have two matches now. I'd like to have that last third one. Nice. Uh, well, uh, so many like Jojo. I think Jojo's awesome. I, I'd like to see him back in three six five. And I'd like to wrestle him. And you know, some of the new guys coming in, like Pretty Ricky, I think. Was on my list too. I think we have a good, good match. Um, yeah, yeah. There's still, there's a lot, man. Anybody really? Um, bigger guys too. Um, I don't know anyone in Ontario really. Hundred <laughs> percent. Now you kind of grew up in PWA. You were a champ, um, and then I announced PWA is closing its doors. What were your thoughts initially on that? And like, do you like that it's changed to 365 Pro Wrestling? Or now with all these matches coming out, do you wish we would have continued the history? No, man, I think it's good, man. I think change is always good. As long as you still like, you know, recognize the uh, the rich history behind. Like, it's been like a 15th year anniversary, of course, you know, coming up this year. Um, as long as you still recognize all that stuff, it's good to, you know, change it up a bit and uh, rebrand it. I like the name. Uh, and I love what you've been doing on YouTube, like just posting stuff constantly. I think that's the way to go uh, nowadays, and it's good. It's good. It's a good change. And the belts too are looking amazing, man. I can't, I can't wait to uh, actually hold one of them. 
hundred percent. Now I'm hoping to, uh, actually get the 365 belt, the global belt, uh, even bigger than it is. I got it and it's nice and it looks good, but I'm like, I want even bigger. Like bigger? Uh-huh. our pure wrestling championship was a big title. It was a big, big belt. Yeah. And this one's more, more modern. So it's a little bit sleeker and a little yeah. bit smaller. And I'm, I'm thinking about, uh, probably putting an order in and getting it just bigger the same yeah, bigger. style same look but a, a bigger thicker belt yeah no no i love that like I, I love the design of it like the first picture you posted i think i took it and put it as my cover picture on facebook and it's been up there ever since the picture came out uh no i want to that's that's yeah it's a beautiful belt man what like where'd you get the design like what was what inspired you to go with that i just found a belt online and it looked really good and then the new japan belt as well yeah. it is awesome so i kind of went that part, route yeah. for sure like for sure definitely gives those vibes yeah it's amazing i can't wait uh and, and lenny actually said uh he he gets credit for this one because he picked it out he's like get the side plate so we can put the guy's names on it so when you win it it's actually like it's always in history the names on that belt oh yeah that's awesome yeah i always love that idea too but you gotta get a bigger strap than i guess well yeah <laughs> Hundred percent. How many now, times was there in PWA? Like all together, there are seventeen people who have ever held the Pure the Wrestling Championship. Right. Yeah, it's not bad. So yeah, seventeen names on there. Over four years. years. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So it was pretty prestigious. Some of us wanted a lot. Some of us not so much. But there are seventeen yeah. champions in total, and I think everyone who held the belt really represented it well, and it was at a good time and moment. So I'm hoping okay. that. Tradition kind of continues on with the global championship. Oh, yeah, for sure. Now, is there any sport you like to watch other than pro wrestling? No, man, not really. Like, I don't really watch <laughs> much stuff. Not even movies, man. I'm not like, unless I'm watching it like with somebody, then I'll enjoy a movie. But like, I'm not really, I don't know what's, I don't have the attention span to uh, watch something like that. I used to watch soccer a lot when I was younger, but yeah, I just kind of, Grew out of that. And yeah. were you born in Serbia? Yes. Yeah. And you moved here at what age? Uh, ten. I was ten. Yeah. So that must have been a huge challenge as well. To like, English is a second language. Moving yeah. to a different country. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was. It was hard, man. For a while, I think it took me about two, three years to just be able to communicate. You know. Where you can learn, sure. you can learn to speak in like in a couple of months. You can, you know, learn to get around, but you can't really hold a conversation with somebody. Um, you know, there's a lot of dialogue and stuff that people use that you wouldn't understand. So you just sound stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was tough, man, for sure. It was tough at school, especially and all that stuff. But got through it. Have you got to go back since you were 10? Yeah, I have uh, once. I think it was 2009. I went back for, I think, for a month or so. That's amazing. Yeah. Go traveling. For sure. <laughs> Eric is going to want me to bring this story up because he, he hates it. You got uh-huh. settling up for your big match, and then you moved to Fort McMurray. Jeez, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and he's like, what do you mean he's moving? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's moving, man. And then yeah. he yeah, came back. I, I totally I was oblivious to the fact that he was upset over that. I never knew that. Oh, no, he always, because we were kind of setting up uh, for that big match. I think he was uh, looking forward to being the man. And then you moved, and I I didn't took the belt off yet. I'm like, oh, we'll figure it out. Because yeah, I also yeah. had BC. Coming, so I thought maybe, ah, maybe Port McMurray, BC, we could do something <laughs> like that. And then <laughs> things happen, and you end up back in Ontario. Uh, yeah, Ontario. So we, we, and, did, we did the match, right? Or no? And then you end up doing the match, I believe, on Canada Day? Yes, yeah, which, which, which was recorded, but somebody stood in front of the camera the whole time. The whole so time. Just, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Jeez. But no. <laughs> That's great. How, how was that point in your life? Like, were you just going there for to make some more money, or was it just, I need a, a different job? Yeah, it was just kind of like, you know, go out there and try and see. I had a buddy up there that he was kind of promising me more things than, uh, you know, he made it seem better than what it was. And then I went <laughs> up there and then I had a girlfriend at this time. 
that I didn't really want to let go of. Uh, and that kind of helped me, uh, helped bring me back here. Um, yeah, it was an experience. It cost me about three grand, but you know, <laughs> it was counting. Yeah. Now, if you were to like write a book, I would read it because I hear all these crazy stories about your life and they're just amazing to me and not enough people <laughs> see them. And <laughs> maybe that's okay. Maybe that's okay. But if yeah. you were to write a book, what would the title of it be? Oh man. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I'd even accept that as the title. Oh man, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just be so good. Um you're yeah. known on the internet being like a, a huge troll. You and Elian, you guys are super funny online. But and then in person, you're very quiet. You like have jokes that you're like giggling yourself about. You just don't share, or I, what's that all? About? I do, I do. I find everything funny, man. Like I like I said earlier today, I was trying to what I was trying to say there earlier was like I take stuff in, but I don't really express myself that much. Nice. But I still like you know people are like oh you, like you don't you know you don't get that joke, and I'm like no I do get that jo- joke. I see what you're saying. I just. Or, like I, I, there's no i don't really give a response like i don't sell it really yeah so i'm just kind of like that i don't know why it's just how my personality is um but yeah it's the same way i think uh but yeah man online is a good way to express yourself i think <laughs> and it's not even that i want to express myself it's just like i you i think it's a good way to keep your name out there even if it's just sharing a meme you know oh who shared it oh it's joey allen okay yeah remember that name kind of a deal you know um, I think social media is great. I mean, you can post whatever on there. There's so you can just, you know, some of these people are getting so famous and getting crazy bookings just based off their social media, and that's incredible. You know, good for them. Hundred uh, percent. So, so I'm trying to get my headbutt over on that. You know, like you just need that one move that, like, the one you just need a little clip that gets you over, and you can get you know bookings all of a sudden for some crazy that you did. Um, it's true. Supported. It's the gift era. Yeah, absolutely. I think I had a, some. I had a discussion with somebody about that too. Like, you know, you get booked off a clip, and then you know you don't even need to be that good or whatever, which is you know not a good thing, obviously. But <laughs> it just it just kind of is. It just kind of is what the state of the biz- business is, I guess, nowadays. Well, for sure, and you're also giving people something they want to see, and that's what people want as well. So, like, if you do this something really good, like uh, Joey Ryan's doing this flip or whatnot, there's right. all these things, and 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 good for the guys getting paydays on them and getting bigger opportunities and getting to go further. Oh, it's, it's amazing! Like that's the best thing about any wrestling is, as a fan, you can select to watch what you want to watch. And the see, you know, you can as a wrestler, you can do what you want to do, and then it's up to the. It's it's amazing, you know. No, nobody's forcing anyone to watch anything or to buy anything. You can just pick and choose from so many different, uh, you know, talents. Yeah. For sure. Now, if there's anything to wrap it up, you'd like to say to the fans, what would it be? And the floor is open for you. To the fan? Oh no, I'm just excited, man. I want to see. Um, check out the 365 YouTube channel. If you go down to my playlist and if you watch any of my matches, if you want to write me any feedback, uh, you can comment on there or just inbox me on Facebook and let me know what you liked or what you didn't like about the matches. Uh, that'd be great. And then we'll see you soon for 365 in Kitchener. Well, and, and then what are your social media handles? Uh, so Joe gimmick on Instagram. Or you can just type in Joey Allen on Instagram. It's in a pop-up. It's private. I don't know why. My girlfriend's trying to get me to go public. Because she's like, what's the point of using hashtags if you're not public? Uh, I agree. And then uh, Facebook, just Joey Allen. That's where I'm most active on. I have my phone on me most of the day, so I'm always on there. All right, man. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Hope you have a good day. Hope the gyms open up soon and can't wait to see you back in the room. Yeah, man. Take care, man. Thanks for having me, best.